Good. All right, yep. hey everybody, it's Ryan Kidd, and I am the Human B Side, and I'm here with a brand new series on my channel. It's entitled "Show Me a Record," and uh, basically the gist of it's very simple. I'm going to have a guest every week, and uh, we're going to start with questions, three questions, and we're going to go back and forth. But the question starts with "Show Me a Record," and uh, these questions were not shared uh, with the guest, so that we're totally off the cuff. We're sitting by our collections, so we just got to pull it. As the uh, as the questions come, so uh, my guest is Bruce, uh, also known as uh, Punk's Not Dad, a brand new uh, channel to YouTube. Bruce, much respect. Thanks for joining me on the volume one. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, man. We we became friends through I think was it Doctor and the Kid, and then or was it before that I reached out. I reached out to you personally as well through email, but yeah, yeah, that, that's where it started pretty much. Cool. For sure. Yeah, and uh, he's beloved on Doctor and the Kid. And uh, now he's got his own channel. He's killing it. <laughs> it's great to have you here. And uh, we're going to start it off, man. Well, as the guest, I'll let you pick whether you would like to go uh, as a as the person asking the question or answering the question first. You let me know. I'll ask. All right, hit me, baby. I've been sitting on these questions for a while. I even wrote them down. Here okay. we go. Here we go. You know, it's a little bit of pressure because you're like, you know, it, it's off the cuff. So here we go. I think these are good, okay. but if they're not, I trust they're going to let us know. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, but I don't give a shit. Here we go. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Number one, <laughs> show me a record that you used to love, but have grown out of favor with, or conversely, a record that you weren't fond of, but grew to love over time. Okay. So a record uh, that I used to love and maybe I don't like it so much anymore, or a record that I didn't like at first. And now I really love. You got it. Okay. You get a two for there. Okay, yeah. I actually I got a two for for you as well, so that's cool. All right, here we go. Let me try to think here. A record that I didn't like so much at first, but now I love. And maybe a record that I didn't love. It can be either or. You don't have yeah. to do both. I, I'm trying to think of both, but I could pull one here right away. Let's see. Let me get over two in here. I kind of see another one too that could answer the other question next to it. Okay. Open to the floodgates, baby. Yeah, yeah, here we go. <laughs> All right, so I was young. I kind of maybe didn't understand it. I didn't delve into this kind of sound yet. But, uh, I, I, you know, I love the 70s punk stuff, right? As do you. Yep. And, uh, this band was talked about all the time. And then people are like, this band is amazing. You got to listen to this record. And I listened to it. And at first, honestly, I didn't really love it. But it was uh, the first Suicide record. And this, this is an alternative cover to it. Uh, but it's the same track list and everything. Uh, now, I love this record, man. Yep. I think the record's great, man. It's just, it's got an atmosphere. The whole thing is a vibe. And it's, it's just a yep. great, great uh, uh, piece of wax, man. Frankie Teardrop, come on. Yes, yeah. I just picked up a copy of that recently, remember? Did you do you have the original cover with the white? It's a reissue, but it's the original cover. It's the original yes. cover, yeah. I just had this one. I actually got this for five ninety nine. That's actually a great deal, man. It costs so a lot too. more now. Yeah, I think so too. And this has a cover. I don't think the original had a cover of ninety six tears on it, did it? Uh, mine does. Yeah. Oh, it does. Okay, maybe it does. Yeah, but this one, this was one at first. I, I, I maybe it just flew over my head, man. But uh, now I love it. I think it's a punk classic, man. I, I would say it's a must-have, really. Yeah, no, I, I'm definitely glad I have it, but it's not. It's not one of my favorites, but yeah, I'm it's. Glad I have it. It, it took a little while for me to to ease into it. Same kind of thing with like uh, Chrome, that band. Chrome. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Alien soundtracks. Yeah, I love Alien soundtracks. Now, then I'm just like, I just want the fast, uh, two and a half minute song, boom, 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 done. You know. And yep, uh, suicide it. was maybe too out there for me, but you know, I yeah, get a little bit older. Potatoes, and, man. Yeah, potatoes. exactly, exactly. Yeah, that was a great first question. Um, yeah, and I'll cool. try to Thank think you. of another record that I love and maybe I fell out of love with. That's a, that's. I think that's even more uh, even a, a more interesting question. Yeah, it might be a little harder to find that. Yeah, I'll keep that on the back burner. And we'll <laughs> see, uh, see if I can pull something there for you. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to ask you, Bruce. 
Right. Show me a record whose cover looks exactly like the band sounds. Or a cover for a record that looks nothing like the band sounds. Wow. But you see this cover and you're like, this band, okay, I put it on. Wow, this sounds exactly like the cover looks. Or like, no way. <laughs> Not even close. You've been duped. Oh, boy. It's a tough one. I know, you're coming out hard with me, brother. Give me, give me some time. <laughs> well, you, you threw your twofer at me, so I said, let me throw my twofer back at him there, man. Come on. I'm, oh, really, man. I'm really digging for uh, something that I I used to love, but I don't. Cause I, mm, 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 that's a good one. That's a tough question. Yes, it is. All right, let's see here. Um, Stump the Bruce. Stump the Bruce. I'm just trying to find it. <laughs> Are you alphabetical or no? Yes. Oh, okay, good. I'm going to have to get doctor to edit this shit. <laughs> It'll come out next year. <laughs> I knew exactly what the hell this was when I saw this. <laughs> your, uh, your video is stuck for me. Damn it. No, I know. What is that record? I can't, I can't see it. So tell me. Paul Collins beat baby. Which one? The first one? First one. Yeah, it's totally power pop, you know right? exactly what this is as soon as you totally. look at it. Yeah, I think even the next record, you know exactly. What, all his records, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, and that is, a, a, I think, a perfect question geared toward a power pop record. You know, That's the first the, thought was they, they have the look. Even the punk rock guys didn't always have the covers, but the power pop guys, they always had the cover. There's was always a cover, yeah. Right. The beat by Paul Collins. Um, I mean, dude, there's I, not a bad song on that record. No. That that record is flawless uh, to me. Yes, yeah. we used to cover uh, "Walking Out on Love" in one of my old bands. Yeah, that you was know, fun. Uh, growing up in the time period, I did th the first time I actually heard "Walking Out on Love" was when the Exploding Hearts did it. Exactly, and, and then and, I found. And I swear to God, I covered that, did not realizing the Exploding Hearts had done it as well, but they always obviously did it better. And I think, the, I mean, the <laughs> nerves. The Nerves, even yeah, but for it, them, yeah. For the people that don't know, Paul Collins is a band called The Nerves, which is another power pop band with Jack Lee and um, my man from the Plimsolls yeah. having a brain fart. What's my boy's name? Peter Case. Peter Case, yeah. They had a band called The Nerves. Paul Collins is actually the drummer. Uh, Hang on the Telephone was written by Jack Lee and The Nerves. Went on, Blondie went on to play that. But yeah, Which Peter Case from the Plimsolls, and then you got the beat for Paul Collins. Did All great hear, stuff. You ever hear this one? The, oh. Uh, the breakaways yes yeah yes. That, i don't I think, have that that's really fucking cool dude yeah this is cool I, 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 yeah i met peter case and uh, he signed it for me that's uh, great I, yeah. I don't have that i've heard of him uh peter case man <laughs> you know it's funny uh i remember when i got this signed i was working at the record store and he did an in-store and uh he walked in dude and he was so disheveled and like i didn't even recognize him and they're like, that's Peter Case. I said, Fuck. I thought they were fucking me. I said, no, it's not. That's not Peter Case. And it was, dude. And he was so disheveled. And he, dude, I swear he had fucking puke on his uh, suit jacket. Like, Jesus it, Christ. It was, and he played maybe the first three songs. And he was superb, man. He did some Plim, uh, some Plim Soul songs. And then he went into this Beatles cover. I can't remember which cover he did. And it was like halfway through the song, and his voice kind of cracked, and he stopped, and he goes, all right, I'm going back to my hotel room to drink coffee and smoke cigarettes. <laughs> that was the end of the it's show. Like he's, it's like he stopped at happy hour on the way to the fucking... Dude, dude I, I don't know. I can't say what Peter <laughs> Pace was or wasn't doing, but that was, uh, that was something else, man. I'm glad I got my record signed before. <laughs> that whole thing <laughs> He was Could playing later that you. night at uh, at uh, Maxwell's in Hoboken, New Jersey. But oh wow, yeah. yeah. But he did, did you see when um when uh they got back together? Peter Case and Paul Collins got back together, 
and we're touring around. And the, the apparently the tour – I read Paul Collins' book and uh, uh, yep. P- Peter Case and the band left him in the middle of the country somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. He eventually moved to Spain, but yeah, I have that book too. Yeah. I haven't gotten all the way through it, but – yeah, that's yeah, a I good got one. like I got like I got like forty rock autobiographies that yeah. I've gotten like a quarter or halfway through. Like I, I can't finish a book, save my life. That book is so yeah. fascinating because the nerves don't really fit cool. in, right? What's that? Don't fit in, right? Don't fit in, yeah. That's the name yeah. of it. yeah. And uh, yeah. I found the book fascinating because you're getting the story firsthand from one of the the first independent bands to really like tour uh nationally like yeah. on their own it's pretty yeah cool. it's incredible man yeah. yeah it's really hard to do and he's still doing it kudos to them yeah yeah hell yeah great pick dude great album yeah love that it's good stuff did you ever hear um was the second album the kids are the same i love that record yep too. yeah it's a good one. yep have that as well love it as well the guy can't do any wrong yeah he, he really has a great uh a great discography so yeah and, and real, real quick before we get on to the next one like yeah i don't know if you know who kurt baker is but mm-hmm. i'm a pretty big fan of kurt baker right and, and him and paul collins are pretty good buddies so that's yeah. i've kind of kept in touch with paul's career yeah. through through kurt what kurt's doing so yeah. was kurt baker in the leftovers yes yeah correct. okay that yeah i know that band too yeah. but his but his solo power pop shit and garage stuff is amazing hey i heard a new power pop record by this guy named mick farron you ever hear this guy mick farron yeah i've heard the name you know he's new to me and uh it, dude this record came out this year and it sounds like something from 79 or 80 it's unbelievable something we would love yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I, the problem was I was, at the, I was at the store i had a stack of records already and farron's record was like tw- dude new vinyls getting out of control is like 27 bucks yes yes said, they are. Ah, i can't I, maybe next week you know if it's still there i'll pick it up but it sounds it depends good. on what it is. Yeah, it's the first time it's been reissued. I'll, I might spend twenty seven, but if there's a bunch of different ones, no. Well, yeah, no, but it's a it's it came out this year. It's not even like a oh, it's brand new shit. It's brand new, gotcha, but it, gotcha. it sounds yeah, like yeah, it, my bad. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds like it would have came out in you know that that early power pop kind of era. The VS seventy nine eighty yeah. total. All right, let's get into number two here. Hit me. All right, try not to get too deep on you, baby. Yeah, let's keep it simple. Put your belt on, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No matter how bad your day or week has been, no matter the adversity you're dealing with in life, <laughs> show me a record that always brings instant comfort and joy. Instant comfort and joy. Um, when you're feeling down, brother, what's what's a what's a go-to record when you're I'll feeling show like you. shit? I'll show you. Let me get it. It's a single. I went right to it. No matter how bad I'm feeling, Bruce, if the kid ever gets down, which is rare, um, I can put this single on and I know that I will I will be revived. The rock and roll gods will pick me up and see me through. And it's with uh, Ring Dang Doo by Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. Oh, wow. I did not expect that <laughs> yeah. at all. I love this record, man. That, and the, that, the song is just so happy, and it's so fun. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious, you know? And uh, also, let me see. I got a few of their records, too, I could pull out that are... That's just a band that makes you feel, you know, it's party time anytime you put them on, you know? Yep. I did not expect that. I'm going to be honest with you. That's a good pick. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, here we go. You got a little Wooly Bully here. Yeah, of course I know Wooly Bully. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, fun stuff, right? It's great, man. Like Garner would call it frat house rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he yeah. might not be wrong. And look at the get-ups, man. I mean, that's something else. I mean, he's a fucking genie, or he's a pharaoh. I'm yeah, like, he's a pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he has an interesting he's story a too. Genie. He kind of disappeared yeah. for uh, for a long time, and then kind of came back. And then also, uh, when I'm feeling down, who could? Who could deny well, uh, Joy Division. the schizos, you know? Oh, the schizos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had to throw yeah. that in there for, for good measure. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that, yeah. uh, a lo- yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What an interview. Go back and check that one out, folks. That was something else. <laughs> um, Woo. Yeah. A lot of that good 60s, uh, 60s kind of garagey stuff, it puts me in a good mood if I'm feeling down picks me right up and 
And, That's what it's designed for, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's party time music, you know? It's fun. But, you know, there's probably a thousand records. I mean, the Ramones are easily one of them, too. You know? Sure. Yeah. Um, it's just great, great tunes. I, you know, I, I might even pick some more up after that. Paul Collins is definitely one, too, man. I mean, talk about a happy record. You yeah, know, just a lot, ma- lot of major chords, man. Yeah, uh, this one, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of G, C, and D going on there. Even the slider, man. I put slider on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's right good on. stuff. But yeah, I'm going. My answer is Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. They pick yeah, me. You're not. You're not grabbing Joy Division or Boys Don't Cry. I'm no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll listen to it, but not not when I'm feeling down, man. I'm not going to sulk. <laughs> 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 All right. So, show me a record, Bruce, that used multiple genres. Show me a record where a band kind of maybe a cro- like crossed over, where you have uh, multiple genres in, in one record. Oof. And you're punishing me here. I could go with another question if it helps, yeah. No, fuck that. <laughs> now all I want to do um, is... I'm going to I'm I'm take, take a bitch way out. All I want to do is listen to Ring Dang Do now. <laughs> I'm gonna take. I'm taking. Taking the easy way out. <laughs> Your video is still stuck for me, so you got to tell me what the record is. Taking the easy way out. <laughs> what is it? Joe Strum and Mascalero Streetcore. Uh, That's world music, baby. <laughs> was that Street Streetcore? Streetcore, Mascaleros, man. You know, here I pull. I got it out over here. It's like a fantastic record, isn't it? Yes. And uh, I'm just thinking, like, I could have went more creative, but this is the first thing I thought of because there's a lot of different styles on this record. I'm actually glad They're you went. With, I'm glad you went with something like this instead of like a a hardcore crossover metal kind of thing. I, I don't have a lot of that stuff. I mean, I, I could pull wire, but that's obvious. Nah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, going back to your first question, what's a record that I loved? Uh, maybe I didn't love this, but I liked, and I kind of fell out of love with, and I'll, I'll show it to you. I'll probably get shit for this, but I don't care. Let's see. Come on. You're probably going to give me shit for this, but this record. Bullshit. I liked it. I'm not I'm not huge on it, man. I mean, mm. I have it. Yeah. Not a big suicidal guy. Me neither, man. And, uh, I mean, I showed Dookie in my first video, dude. Come on. When I, <laughs> when I, uh, when I first heard it, I was young and angry, and uh, it was like cool. And now, Made a lot of sense. Yeah, now I don't have much. I used time to really dig stick with all and mass nice. ball and shit like that when I was young. Yeah, I mean, well, even I don't the, care uh, for it now. Yeah, it's tough, you know. So, but that street core record, um, this is a reissue of it, and I'm kind of shocked at how much this freaking record goes for now. It's kind of insane. Oh yeah. Yeah. What is Hellcat? What, what, which pressing is yours? This is from 2003 on Hellcat Records. Yeah, that's that's the same one I got. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you know, you seen the Future's Unwritten, that Clash documentary? Of course. Yeah, or the Joe Strummer documentary. Uh, Without people, you're nothing. I dude, remember like it, <laughs> toward the end, Joe Strummer's on the boardwalk in New Jersey trying to get people to see him. And yes. They're like, and they're like, who? And he's like, I was in the Clash, and I'm just like, oh my god. I mean, it, it almost makes me mad. No, it, it almost makes me mad. Definitely makes me mad. But he doesn't. He doesn't seem like offended by it. He didn't seem down about it. He was just a dude trying to promote no. a show. And, uh, no, he was a wonderful human being. It seemed. It seemed as such. Yeah. I've always said the Ramones are my favorite band, but my favorite musician, hands down, is Joe Strummer. I mean, no questions asked. That record's fantastic, man. Street Core is great. Uh, what's the yeah, uh, I mean I, I'm actually glad I pulled this I, I, at first I was like that's the easy way out but this yeah. is actually a perfect example yeah this and you covers... know what, man I haven't really uh, I haven't listened to it in a while but I, I remember uh, Silver and Gold it's the last song I love that song that acoustic yeah, it's, yeah. Got, it's got acoustic stuff it's got folky stuff it's got really punk good. stuff it's got reggae stuff it's got yeah, a bunch it, of different styles yeah it does uh, Coma Girl that's a punk yeah. rocker that's a punk yeah. song Coma Girl is a, a good kickoff track too Get Down Moses is probably my favorite tune on here. Yeah, good. it's a good record. Yeah, yeah. got to so chew it over with your you wisdom teeth, baby. Way out, but you did you did great on that. Uh, this is a great record. Anybody who doesn't know this, pick this shit up. Uh, it's it's uh, your turn to ask. No, no, I just asked you how bad your day was. No, you're right. You're right. No, 
You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, question number three. Genres. This is this is the best question of, of mine here, dude. Okay. All right. I think you're going to really like this. I hope you do because I, I got happy when I wrote it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> question three. Show me a record that you would have given a young Ryan kid when he was first trying to start a band. Wow. That's a really good question, dude. Wow. There's so many. Mm -hmm. I want you to think on this one. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, I know, I know what young Ryan kid would want to hear, <laughs> but, but I also want to make it a very, very important album, you know, to have his band be as good as it can be. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. You know, but you can't, it can't be too obvious, you know, because I was never the obvious sort. <laughs> yeah, don't pick Dan or the Ramones or no, you know, no, don't it pick can't the be obvious. That. It can't be that. That's a really good question. You know what? I'm not even going to go 70s punk for this. Wow. Okay. I, I'll pick a 70s punk band and then I'll and then I'll pick. Uh, I'll show you my 70s pick first. This is the first of the series we can make the rules as we go baby oh yeah no there are no rules <laughs> <laughs> i just showed sam the sham records <laughs> nobody gives a shit they're gonna love it um okay i would want early ryan kid when he's starting a band to listen to the first boys album um one because I want, want him to get more into melody. I mean, there was yes. a reason they called them the Beatles in bondage. I mean, they're yeah, correct. great, great songwriters, man. I mean, these, this, there's not a bad song on this album. And it's, it's punk, but the, the songs are crafted so well. They're just really, really uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, like Terminal, Terminal Love, for instance. I mean, that's, that's I mean... You don't have to argue. You could argue that it's a power pop song or a punk song. It's a good fucking song. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, so. it's, it's fucking great. So you, know, you can argue what it is genre-wise. But yeah, that's a great pick. I love that record too. Uh, it's uh, one of my favorite punk records ever. And it made me think of another one. Maybe when I was talking about Melody. Uh, let me see here. You know, because when I first started playing tunes, man, I was, you know, you're, uh, you're young. And like you said, you want everything, you know, fast and loud and... You don't really yeah. appreciate the, uh, I think, the art of a, of a great song. Exactly. Yeah. Faster, louder. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, the dictators, come on, man. <laughs> That's what you want when you're a kid, yeah, baby. Exactly. That's what you want. Uh, another band would be probably this Records. This band, the Records. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Songs like Starry Eyes. I mean, Girl in the Gold. Was it Gold? Tina Rama? Yeah, Tina Rama is probably one of my favorite Tina Rama's songs. Tina Rama's a killer ever. track. Uh, yeah. Up All Night. Uh, what's so the like one? Like you said, if you, if, if you wanted to learn harmonies and melody and how to write a good song, that would be a perfect record. Yeah, there's a song on a records album. I think it's on the other one over there. It's called uh, I Don't Remember Your Name. And, man, I love that song. But, yeah, it's filled with great uh, melodies, but awesome guitar work still. Like, it still rips, and it's, yes. it's still uh, got an edge, and it's great. And, uh, you know, it's actually reminded me of this band, too. Hold on. See what you've done? I'd want to get into this. All right. So we had some technical difficulties there. I'm sorry. I was talking about the only ones, the first album. Yes. The question was uh, a, a band you wished that young Ryan kid would listen to before he started getting into music. So I showed the records. I showed the boys' uh, first album. The only ones is another band where I thought it's it all comes back to melody. You know, like I was trying to bash out two, three chord, you know, punk song after punk song when I was a kid. Yeah. And that's great. And it's a blast, you know, and it's still great. Yeah. I you wish know. I honed a craft uh, as far as writing songs like this. Like even the first song, like The Whole of the Law. I mean, mm -hmm. amazing, amazing tune. Yes. Yeah. I'm kind of throwing my hand here a little bit because I got a video coming up about this kind of stuff. But Oh, good. Um, but, you know, we always talk about the blurred lines between a good power pop band and a good punk band. Right. I don't know if anybody defines that line better than the only ones. Like another girl, another planet. That's the one song that I could say, if you don't know that line, 
listen to that, you'll be more confused. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, because you know, it's like the perfect song that straddles that line. You know? Well, it, it goes into like, uh, you know, we've talked about this on the live stream, not you and I personally, but other people like would not consider the only ones a punk band. I consider them a punk rock band. I think that they're a punk band. They got lumped into it. I mean, uh, but they're thinking of punk as what came, what they heard in the eighties or what they heard yeah. later on. And I don't know the, uh, another girl, another planet. Listen to that song. It's a classic punk song. It's one of the, one of the best really. I think it is, but I mean, it's, you could, you could also call it power pop if you wanted to. I think it's absolutely power pop too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I have no problem anybody referring to them as a punk band. Again, it's good music. I don't care. Call it what we, you want. We could just say they're a great rock and roll band. There you go. Because no matter what <laughs> genre you fall in, it's yeah. all rock and roll. Yeah, I'm not and trying to be like it. <laughs> be the the punk police here and tell you what's <laughs> punk and what's not. That's not Some me. Gatekeepers, dude. <laughs> yeah, God, the worst. Mm. People are the worst. Yeah, but that's a great record, man. I, I love I mm -hmm. love that record so much. Um, so we're gonna get right. to the last question, right? This is your yes, your question. My last question. Okay, uh, Bruce, show me a record with. One of your favorite side one track ones. So a record that opens up and just kicks it. I got my. I point. don't know if you know this band. Okay. I don't right. know if you do. This is not a seventies punk band. Okay. But this is one of the best opening tracks on a record ever, and I was really thinking before we did this. I hope I can bring this band in this somehow. Okay, good. I, <laughs> and then you just gave it. And to I me. helped you. Out. All right, good. I like you're going a little outside the box here too. That's good. I like that. All right, here we go. All right. This is Bruce's one of Bruce's favorite side one track ones. Let's see it, buddy. What do we got? Super drag in the valley. Of dying stuff. No, I never heard. Star. I never heard this group. What is? What's this group about? Do you remember the song in the mid '90s? Who sucked out the feeling? Do you remember that? I don't recall. Of course, was, was a little was a little bass riff. No. It was like do 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 do. And it was like Maybe who sucked out I... the feeling? <laughs> who sucked... Do you remember that song? No, but I like the way you do it. Okay, all right. It was it was a hit on MTV, right? Yeah, that was what they were known for. But this band is so much better than that. They're right. out of Knoxville, okay? okay? Tennessee, baby. Yeah, they're in Tennessee. And they were on a major for two records. They put out their first record and their second record on a major. They got dropped because they didn't sell well enough. And this is their first independent release. And this record, by the way, side note. Had you asked me what's the most you paid for a, for a record in your entire life? That's what? Wow. This was never reissued. Cool. I paid $150 for an OG pressing of this. Wow. They released a 20th anniversary last year, or two years ago. This came out in 2000. 2000, okay. In the Valley Dining Stars, they did this record themselves in Arena Rock recordings. But the song I'm talking about is Keep It Close to Me by Super Drag. Keep It Close to Me. I'm going to have to, I'll check it out it after just, we're done. Uh, it just comes in with palm muted guitar. And vocals and then the fucking band about after 45 seconds i mean it's it just it's suspense 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 you're like when's it kicking in when's it kicking in yeah but when it kicks in dude it Killer. knocks your fucking ass on the ground <laughs> that's awesome keep it close to me super drag side a song song one this super drag all right learned this a new band one of our favorite records huh i learned a new band today and they're from my state dude. that i live in that's cool yeah these guys they're in a band also called Leaves of Memory, but that's it's the same kind of stuff. But Super Drag, if you don't know this band, dude, I'm telling you, this record, it's better than their major label ones, in my opinion. This is their first independent release, 2000. Brother, Super Drag Check is awesome. That's one of Bruce's favorite side one track ones, man. One of my oh. favorite bands ever. Really? One of your favorite oh, bands yeah. ever? Top 20, probably. Cool. Wow. Of all time. I like you went a little outside the box too. And we're getting see that's what I want to do yeah. with these videos. You get to know people a little bit more because uh, you catch them all you know off the cuff. So you know you probably never would have showed me that record if I didn't ask that question. Exactly because yeah. we have our thing we do and, and we yeah. know what we like and it's cool and we we have that common ground. But I do have a few gems like Super Drag that are 
a fantastic group. Cool, man. I could get more into their history and more of their detail, but for now, in the Valley of Dying Stars with Super Drag is a fantastic side one. Track one. Track one. So, uh, what would you describe them as, like, as a whole? Like, a, like a, as a rock and roll? They, there's, I mean, obviously, they're from Tennessee, so there's a little bit of the southern tinge there, but it's not, southern rock's a stupid term, and I don't like it. Yeah. Like, there, there's no Allman Brothers influence there, even if there is, but, like, it's, it's just good, pure, catchy rock and roll. Cool. If I had to say, I would say it was, like, a, there's a little power pop there. Oh, okay, wow. A little punk influence, but it's, it's just good southern rock and roll cool is that a little straightforward yeah, yeah very rock. straightforward very catchy Great. a lot of hooks you know uh i think you know we showed a lot of cool stuff today and uh maybe some stuff that like i said the point of the videos maybe stuff we wouldn't show otherwise so this is pretty fun yeah i want people to see new stuff exactly exactly and uh well bruce that was i think it went well man that was the first volume of uh show me a record and i was so happy that you're my guest man we, i think you did yeah, thank you so much for having me dude it's yeah. been a pleasure and i've yeah. had a good time and uh good luck any, topping any, that guys yeah if anybody else wants to uh do one just shoot me an email we'll do uh show me a record and uh, Bruce, much respect. Thank you for hanging out, man. And I'll see you on Thanks the stream. Yep, see you tomorrow, brother. Love right. you. Be good, man. Thank you again. Cheers. Take care.